Brothers, sisters, comrades, Salam Alaikum. Let's remember why I am here, why you're here, why George was elected Rochdale's MP, and why I want you to help me get elected as the independent MP for Newcastle, Central and West. Yeah. We are here tonight for the people of Palestine, and in particular, the heroes of the Gaza siege. Israel has caged them, starved them, bombed them, tortured them, and then blamed them after decades in the world's most notorious open air prison. Mm. They killed more than 40,000 Palestinians. The majority were women and children in the most documented, but the most denied genocide in history. We must never forgive and we must never forget what happened after October 7th. And by the way, let's put some context on October the 7th. It was never the start of something. It was the continuation in a brutal occupation which started long before anyone had ever heard of Hamas. <coughs> Brutally take homes and lands away from proud nations, push them into the edges, force millions into permanent refugee camps across the region as the Israelis did in 1948. Dehumanize them, trick them with the Oslo peace accords then enab that enabled Israel to get away with stealing more land grabs and illegal settlements. Keep them locked away in the overcrowded Gaza Strip. Arrest their children for throwing stones. Try these kids in front of military courts, which is also illegal under international law. And what does anyone expect? Humans kept chained and oppressed for close to eight decades will one day bite the hand of the brutal jailer. This is psychology 101. This is the simple rule of cause and effect. How many of our leaders have ever tried walking in the shoes of the Palestinians. I have, George has, many people in this room have. There's a few here who are Palestinians. And I salute each and every one of you for your heroic resistance. We are blessed with your presence, our country and our Sadly, there's no evidence of heroic resistance on the benches of Westminster, apart from a few exceptions like George Galloway, Jeremy Corbyn, the late, great and sorely missed Tony Benn, and the Jewish MP, Gerald Kaufman, who died before Starmer could kick him so unceremoniously out of the party Gerald Kaufman served so well. Jewish voices like Gerald Kaufman's have been silenced. Jews daring to criticize Zionism have been silenced. Jews daring to question Israel's brutal occupation have been silenced, disappeared and airbrushed from the Labour Party. More than 40 were hounded out some died before they could seek justice. We all know that the dead can't speak, so allow me to do it for them. Let's just have a look at Keir Starmer's record. Let's remember that in 2011, while he was the Director of Public Prosecutions, 
Keir Starmer was asked by a leading human rights group and lawyers to issue an arrest warrant for the former Zionist foreign minister, Zippy Livni. Remember her? Yeah. The warrant was over allegations of serious war crimes. A UN report at the time stated numerous serious violations of international law were committed by Israel during operations between 2008 and 2009. These included the direct targeting and arbitrary killing of Palestinian civilians. The very same Zippy Livni declared, literally spitting in the face of the UN, I am a lawyer, but I am against the law and against international law in particular. Let's just think about this. Did Starmer, a lawyer himself, armed with UN reports and the submissions of senior lawyers in the UK and human rights experts, do the right thing and uphold the rule of law? No. What Starmer did was block the arrest warrant and by default enable the Zionist regime to get off got free, ensuring they could continue their genocidal onslaught against innocent Palestinians to this very day. The very same unprincipled man who voted against ceasefire while the rest of us were watching on in horror as genocide plays out on our screens before our very eyes. Poor Chi your current MP. Like a rabbit caught in the headlights, she didn't vote for ceasefire. She did something far worse, in my view. She took the coward's way out and abstained. How can you abstain when genocide is the issue? What sort of humanity is at play when this woman sits on the fence knowing full well the sheer reign of terror and mass extermination carried out by Israel against innocent civilians. She watches the same news channels that we all watch. She heard the compelling evidence put forward by the South African lawyers at the International Court her verdict? To say not and abstain. Chianwara, here tonight, we collectively say this to you. You have the stains of Palestinian blood on your hands. Shame on you. <laughs> she is just another small part of the typical UK, EU and US axis of colonial imperialism that would rather impose more sanctions on Iran and the brave Houthis of Yemen. Under international law, we all have a legal obligation to stop the genocide. The Houthis have killed no one in their righteous attempt to interrupt Israel's trade routes from this small Arab nation, itself facing a humanitarian disaster after years of the US-Saudi bombardment, has proved what a giant of humanity and empathy the people of Yemen are. Of course, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was descended from this part of Arabia and was also sheltered by the descendants of Yemen during his time of struggle. That's right. And makes their beloved people to the Prophet, peace be upon him. I mean, we can now see why 
he left the people of Yemen. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but to hell with it anyway. <laughs> the people of Yemen, Yemen are truly blessed. Yeah. And while the Houthis have killed not one soul, the Israelis have killed more than 40,000, including nearly 15,000 children, and nearly 80,000 have been seriously injured. Babies are being born to malnourished mothers and then die days later. And in flagrant breach of international law, the Zionist armed forces are literally destroying hospitals and murdering doctors and surgeons. Once again, labor sides with the UK government, the EU and the US in failing to stand up against these breaches of international law by Israel and prefers instead to pick on the small guys trying their best to do the right thing. Alhamdulillah for the Yemeni people. Look, I don't want to bore you with history here this evening, but if we fail to learn from the past, only Allah alone can help us in our future. Starmer's policy on supporting the Zionist regime goes right back to the first Labour MP, Ramsay MacDonald. Yes, it was the British Labour Party who in the 1930s told the Zionist Jewish agency that Labour supported their plans of apartheid in employment. Let me read you an excerpt of MacDonald's policy. With regard to the Jewish agency's declared policy that all works carried out shall be deemed to be a matter of principle that only Jewish labor shall be employed. My government does not in any way challenge your right to formulate and endorse such a policy. So right back before World War II, the very first Labour government in the UK was aiding and abetting the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. A leopard never changes its spots. Labour cannot be trusted. Labour was the Zionist party of Britain a hundred years ago. It is now also the Zionist party of genocide. Shame on them. The proud and fiercely independent people of Newcastle Central and West now have an exciting choice. A choice that for once offers you a true passionate Geordie voice in Westminster. You can have an MP who is more interested in towing the party line, who will at all costs prop up a Labour government where Starmer can keep you turning without sanction, or you can have an MP who, along with other independents, will be a loud, honest voice, consistently challenging the government to be brave and bold and fix the mess our city and our country is in. The late, great Tony Benn once said, there are two types of politicians signposts and weather vanes. Weather vanes like Chi, who was unable to speak out because the Labour whips punish anyone who fails to toe the Starmer Tory-like line. Or someone like me, who has been a signpost all my life, firm and staunch in what I believe not changing like she, who you turns as often as the wind changes direction. No folks with me, you'll get principle of politics, real social justice, workers' rights, restoring the dignity to the NHS nigh Bevan dreamed of, and fighting day in and day out until Palestine is free. Yeah. Oh. 
I have been a woman of strong principles and conviction my entire life. I do not change like the wind. I will never kowtow to vested interests. I will be a champion for Newcastle and a champion for Palestine. <laughs> Newcastle urgently needs policing for the people, not policing that targets the people. I want to know why in recent months the people who have been arrested at Palestinian protests are all people of colour. Is that coincidence? No. I want to find out. So take heed anyone here from Northumbria police. We're watching you. <laughs> Start locking up the real crooks with their offshore accounts robbing the nation of over 15 billion per year instead of disproportionately stopping our youths just because of the colour of their skin. We're streeting once more privatisation for the NHS, the same path taken by Tony Blair. Labour just cannot learn one single lesson Healthcare should never enable private companies to make grotesque profits while our waiting lists grow year on year. Labour continue to peddle the Tory lie. We don't have the money. Elect me and I will show them where the money is. 12 billion sent to the Ukraine so far. Most of it in arms and weapons. The very weaponry that gets destroyed the next week by Russian missiles. Every Geordie can work this one out. We might as well withdraw 12 billion from the Bank of England and burn it on our barbecues. While our hospitals and schools are at crisis point, Labour and the Tories prefer to line the pockets of international arms dealers. This is an obscenity. Look at something as fundamental as water. Without fresh, clean water, we literally die. Yet Labour props up this failed Tory policy and refuses to nationalise it. Shame on them. Here in Newcastle, I did some digging about Northumbrian water. It's owned by a Hong Kong tycoon and an American equity firm. Oh, God. <laughs> They've just paid out 159 million to shareholders. Meanwhile, they increase our water bills and then fork out a quarter of a million pounds in fines for polluting our rivers and seas. Enough is enough. I will speak up about this until Geordie's retake control of this very basic human right. Clean, fresh water without bills that break the bank. Mm. Labour are now U-turning on a national care service while our disabled children are not getting the care package they need and while our elders are being forced to sell every asset they saved in their hard-working lives to cover social care. Labour applaud the fact we spend millions targeting Yemen, a country already facing a humanitarian crisis. Whether it is the Tories or Labour, we all know this is the politics of perversion. Mm. Sunak and Starmer, the cheerleaders of immoral depravity. And who suffers while they all spend the money on wars that simply should not be fought? It is us, the hard-working folk of Newcastle and every other town across this land. As your MP, I will, along with other strong independent voices, fight your corner loudly, day in, day out. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to restore loud voices of honesty and principle back into the House of Commons restoring the legacy of a giant like Tony Benn. Thank you.